It's something we've all dreamed of, working for a division of government so top secret, even your family and friends don't know what you do. And no, I'm not talking about the CIA or Area 51, we're talking about the SCP Foundation. The only thing that keeps this world from complete destruction and chaos. And today we'll be answering the question, what if you worked for the SCP Foundation? How's it going guys? Welcome back to LBQ, I'm your host Jared Bronstein, and before we get into this one, let me know in the comments below which SCP you'd want to work with if you got a job with the Foundation. As always, we got bonus content to wrap this one up, but for now, we need to get right into it. So it seems there isn't much information out there when it comes to hiring process or working for the SCP Foundation in general. There are a few SCPs that describe certain levels of how important staff are, with the higher tiers being the most protected and prestigious. More specifically, as per the SCP Foundation's website, I quote, Class A personnel are those deemed essential to Foundation strategic operations, and are not allowed direct access to anomalies under any circumstances, end quote. Whereas Class D reads, I quote, Class D personnel are expendable personnel used to handle extremely hazardous anomalies and are not allowed to come into contact with Class A or Class B personnel." End quote. There's even a Class E, and I'm sure you can imagine where they stand in the rankings. So if you were to work for the Foundation, you better hope you're of significant importance to them, otherwise it's very possible you don't last long at all. More specifically, you die a horrible death at the hands of an SCP they're trying to study. But what would the hiring process even be like? It's quite possible the SCP Foundation selects their staff based on how they performed at prior government or classified jobs. It's also possible they hire directly out of school, trying to recruit some of the top researchers and scientists all over the world. But if you're lucky or unfortunate enough to get an interview with the SCP Foundation, depending on how you look at it, odds are you'd need to take the job. And if you denied the job, I have a hard time believing they would just let you walk. It's more likely than not upon you denying the job, you're given an amnestic and forget that the Foundation even exists. It's also very possible they ask you again, well aware of why they didn't succeed in persuading you to join them the first time around. Let's say you do accept the job, now what? Odds are your family wouldn't be allowed to know what you do for work. Or at least, for the lower class personnel. It's quite possible you need to fake your death so as far as your family and friends are concerned, you're no longer around. That way, if for example you're a class D personnel and end up dying on the job, the foundation doesn't have to answer any questions. Everyone's already under the impression that you're dead. Simple as that. For the higher class personnel, it's quite possible you work with your family or partner. Again, I find it very hard to believe that they would allow you to work on a top secret classified case, or SCP, and then allow you to go home and trust you won't say anything to anyone. It's more likely than not, the most you could do is call your family to let them know you're okay, but are working for a classified organization, and that's about as much as they'd be allowed to know if the foundation would even allow you to do that much. Similar to the way specific levels of CIA and other government employees can't reveal, see, or speak to their families too often, the same would go for you if you worked for the SCP Foundation. But when it comes to taking care of your family, I have no doubt they would be treated like royalty. Considering how you'd be working in such a prestigious job, assuming you're one of the top tier personnel at the foundation, they would ensure your family is taken care of. In all aspects, from financially to general safety, the foundation would want you to feel at ease knowing you couldn't be there for your family doing the things a normal husband, wife, father, or mother would do for their own. If you work for the foundation your whole life and make it to a point that you retire, it's quite possible they set you up with a great retirement plan and wipe your memory before they officially let you go. Assuming the foundation would treat their top personnel with respect even after decades of service, I find it very hard to believe they would just dispose of you. As previously mentioned, if you're a lower class personnel, say C, D, or E, well you'd not only be expendable, but you probably wouldn't be given the same perks, nor would your family, as someone class A or B. So you just better hope the foundation sees something in you from the get go, or you're able to convince them that you're a vital part of the team. Otherwise, your days working for the foundation would be quite limited. There are also quite a few positions at the foundation which can range from a security officer or field agent, to a site director or O5 council member, which is the cream of the crop. So as you can see, if you worked for the SCP foundation, how things would play out would simply be based on how valuable you are or potentially could be to them. Personally, I wouldn't want anything to do with them because even if you're a top dog, it's quite possible an SCP breaks containment and destroys everyone and everything at its site, including you. Hello internet and welcome back to the most inquisitive channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions, the place where we collectively scratch our heads and wonder, is there anyone actually running this thing? As always, I'll be your disembodied floating voice, Jack Finch, as we boldly ask the question, what is the SCP Foundation hiding from us? Now, I know we've casually joked about the existence of the SCP Foundation, as if such a Thing could ever go unnoticed this whole time without alerting a keen-eyed journalist or a nothing-to-lose whistleblower. But in all seriousness, let me tell you, Project Anubis is alive and well and in need of- Whew, uh, 
sorry there folks, I lost myself for a minute. Anyway, before we begin, if you're a fan of this SCP based video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up or a respective thumbs down and share this video with a friend, enemy, civil servant or your nearest state senator. Because the question is an important one and in essence the short answer is a lot of things. The foundation's very nature is to keep things secret as we've covered before and contain those things in a special set of procedures. Simple. At its very core, the Foundation seeks to withhold the truth, throw it in a sack and bury it a thousand feet below the earth in a concrete filled tube. Its inner machinations rely on everything but the truth to keep it ticking. Sound selfish? Well, no. There's nothing selfish about preventing the universal manifestation of cosmic horror from strangling all life as we know it with its fleshy tentacles. In fact, it's brave. It's a role that always needs to be filled and is absolutely necessary. But there's one particular group that couldn't disagree more. The chaos insurgency. In 1924, a covert special task force was formed, known only to the O5 Council, which they fittingly nicknamed the Insurgency. It was comprised mainly of members of an unequivocally loyal military task force known as the Red Right Hand. There's a song. Its role was to complete missions outside the remit of the Foundation itself, which involved ethically questionable methods and politically unsavoury results, which the Foundation needed to keep clear of. In short, the Chaos Insurgency was a rogue squad that got the job done when no one else would do it. However, it became a self-fulfilling prophecy in 1948, when during a seemingly routine staged operation, the Chaos Insurgency actually went rogue and seized assets and entities from a multitude of Foundation sites disappearing into obscurity. The question is why though and why do we know incredibly little about them? Well, while the motives behind the insurgency's betrayal remain relatively unknown, their general code is to fully embrace the idea of transhumanism, ignoring ethical limitations in experimentation, taking their practices to the ultimate extreme and making them unpalatable for even the black and grey foundation to stomach. In essence, the Chaos Insurgency believes that it's carrying out a great rebellion against the foundation status quo, believing that humanity should embrace the chaos of the void and use the power held within its anomalies to augment our very existence. But in all seriousness, no one knows what the chaos insurgency actually wants. Maybe it's all a box within a box and the O5 Council are orchestrating layers upon layers of lies, double, triple and quadruple bluffing even themselves. They're playing 4D underwater chess just for the sheer fun of it. Or maybe they all took an O5 level amnestic and forgot the entire point of the chaos insurgency. They're just sat there twiddling their thumbs waiting for the whole thing to blow over. Talking of amnestics though, we're led into our main point. The point that origin doesn't even matter for the SCP Foundation. Where did it all begin? When did the first record pass across the first desk? It can be a thousand tales or one. They all mean the same thing. You'll think that the easiest starting point would be SCP-001, right? Work chronologically and all that, but no. As most things are with the SCP Foundation, it's just not as easy as that. To avoid seamlessly answering the question of where the Foundation originates, the first First note in their catalogue, several SCP-001 files have been created to act as decoys alongside the true file or files. There are exactly 27 separate files under SCP-001. All of them could be true, all of them but one could be false, there's no way to know, and that's exactly as the Foundation likes it. Some people believe it to be the wrong proposal, a document that states the Foundation was formed after the Great Occult War, which the cause and origin of is unknown, but a number of groups banded together to create the Foundation as a preventative measure. Or some believe it to be a decoy. Others believe that codename Bright is the truth, aka the factory, where in the fallout of the American Civil War, a great hulking factory was built that harboured the horrors of a man, James Anderson, known as the Anderson Factory, built in 1835. A surviving member of the O5 reportedly was a liberator of the horrors inside and used the site as a base of operations to secure, contain and protect their way across the planet. Oh, also the factory is sentient and requires habitual human sacrifice. Or the Scranton proposal, the idea that the foundation itself is SCP-001. It's history so full of paradoxes, time travel and anti-memetics that no one really knows where its existence came from. Or it's SCP-001-J, a big red shiny button so powerful that it will obliterate reality itself if pushed. Well, the point is we'll probably never find out and in fact now's about the time that your class A aerosol amnestic should be administered. 
Enjoy. Hello internet and welcome back to Project Anubis. Sorry, I mean welcome back to life's biggest questions. The channel where we blur the lines of reality and succumb to existentialism like a 12 course tasting menu. As always I will be your host Jack Finch who is in no way affiliated with the SCP foundation as we put down our cliff notes, promptly stack our papers and ask the question what if the SCP foundation was breached. Now as the third video in this SCP based series we go to building upon the inner machinations of the SCP foundation as a whole as well as its affiliates, its enemies and its not so friendly friends. Like many of you know the SCP foundation is a machine with many moving parts that in many cases operates in complete independence in remote locations due to a very high probability of things often going very very wrong. Take SCP-2935 for example which is a level 4 key to class containment that essentially signals the end of all life as we know it. 2935 is a portal into a space time anomaly, miraged as a limestone cave beneath a cemetery in Joppa, Indiana. It leads into an alternate reality, a nearly exact replica of modern earth in the year 2016 with the only exception being that all biological and non-biological life was mysteriously wiped out on April the 20th 2016. A mobile task force that initially entered the anomaly for reconnaissance purposes found something that they presumably feared would exit back into our reality so without warning and for unknown reason they dropped a nuke on their location. Essentially in this space time anomaly the SCP foundation has very much been breached. If we take the data recovered from 2935's mobile task force we can see that a massive transmitter error was initially reported from site 81 a location in Indiana. After this breakdown of communication 100% of all SCP sites across the globe were locked down and unresponsive due to a containment breach of unknown magnitude. In this scenario all citizens, presumably everyone on the planet, were ordered to stay in their homes as containment teams work to secure the breach. It didn't go too well and recon teams recovered data that appeared to show 100% cell death of all biological life on the alternate earth. How did our foundation respond to this unsolvable crisis? Well they pumped the whole cave full of concrete and forbade access to anyone at any level. They won't even throw a class D down there to see what happens, they want absolutely none of it ignorance is bliss. Talking of class D we haven't really covered the essential peons and plebs of the SCP employee roster. In line with foundation policy class D are expendable personnel who are used to handle extremely hazardous anomalies with the essential goal of figuring out the inner workings of a skip. In layman's terms they're the lemmings and the foundation is the cliff. Class D personnel are typically drawn from the consistently enlarged pool of prison inmates across the globe but only those that have been convicted of violent crimes and especially those that are on death row. However in certain situations protocol 12 may be enacted which allows the foundation to stretch these rules and seek recruitment from other wider sources such as political prisoners, refugee populations and other civilian sources whatever that may mean. Without class D personnel the foundation would find it incredibly difficult to contain the vast array of anomalies at their disposal and essentially they are the lifeblood of the SCP. But and it's a big but in the event of a containment breach or a catastrophic site event all class D personnel are ordered to be terminated immediately by on site security unless they can find a way to survive that is like in the instance of D9341 and then <laughs> Anyway, the foundation's main motivation is to prevent an end of the world event, most likely originating from the myriad of key to class containments under the foundation's sphere of influence, joyfully dubbed as an XK class scenario. Complete end of the world aka we're all dead. There are over 100 potential SK class anomalies including SCP-4000, a sentient reality ending dragon or SCP-1548, a hateful star that sole purpose is to destroy earth itself. There are a number of differing catastrophic classes though including CK where a new species becomes the dominant beings on earth by by humanity or ZK where reality as we know it ceases to exist. There's also GH or the dead greenhouse effect where nearly all life is extinct but the earth survives and remains viable in some form or another. Or LK 
human restructuring, where humanity remains alive but altered in a way that no longer resembles our very essence of existence. If the SCP Foundation was breached, the likelihood would be that it was due to one of these catastrophic scenarios, because let's face it, a normal containment breach, aka SCP-173, breaking out of its cell, well that's just a walk in the park for the Foundation. Things get out, casualties occur, witnesses are forcibly given amnestics, and the whole damn mess is cleaned up by military task force Epsilon 11 or Nine-Tailed Fox, a crack force of security personnel whose sole purpose is to plug any leaks in the system. But what if that goes wrong? Well, maybe it already has. Take the Ennui Protocol for example, an amnestic administered to the O5 Council under unanimous decision for when situations arrive that even the big players of the Foundation have to say, screw it. I'm out. Because essentially, that's the best course of action. If the SCP Foundation was to be breached, then in all likelihood, the population of the planet would be completely wiped out. Whether it's 100% cell death, solar scorching, an ancient war waged by a sentient dragon, or the Scarlet King obliterating reality itself, the choice of our demise would be our only saving grace. And there's something comforting in that. I guess. The SCP Foundation is home to some of the most terrifying, inhumane, unspeakable monsters, creatures, things, whatever you want to call them. They also house less violent and dangerous beings, but one thing is for sure, if the SCP Foundation didn't do what they do, the world would simply be a very different place. Today's question on LBQ is, what if the SCP Foundation shut down? Now let me start this one by stating, I can't say for sure what would happen. Because of this, I will break down a few scenarios or possibilities that I feel would most likely happen if the SCP did shut down. The reasoning for them shutting down could be due to the fact that the government no longer wanted to fund them, the employees striked and felt the job was too dangerous, they felt it was no longer safe to operate in general, who knows? Regardless, one thing is for sure the SCP Foundation is shutting down, so now what? Well, the most logical thing the Foundation would do is try to kill all of their subjects. Given the fact that we don't know how to kill half of them, would be quite problematic and would certainly lead to a ton of Foundation members inevitably dying on the job. Now, there are definitely a ton of SCPs that would be killed, but as we know, there are certain things such as SCP-217, which is a virus, and SCP-3127, which is constantly evolving, that just cannot be contained. Because of this, if the Foundation did try to exterminate all of their cases, I think it would eventually lead to a majority of the Foundation's employees being killed, some of the SCPs being killed, and the rest of them simply running free and destroying the Earth as well as each other. Which brings me to my next hypothesis. The Foundation shuts down, letting all of their SCPs go free. Not the most likely of the scenarios we'll be going through in this video, but still a possibility, as we know certain SCPs are not supposed to come into contact with others. Not to say this would definitely happen, but odds are, if all the SCPs were set free, of the 5,000 plus that would be running rampant, you could bet your bottom a few of them would cross paths. Who knows what this could lead to? The end of humanity? World destruction? Would some of the SCPs team up with the human race in hopes of saving humanity? Who knows? One thing is for sure, a good majority of the SCPs being held by the Foundation are capable of wiping us all out. Meaning, if they were all set free, well, odds are at least one of the more destructive SCPs would be the reason the human race eventually ceases to exist. Now, I've saved the most realistic and least fun scenario for last. A group of Foundation members form their own SCP Foundation, knowing if the original shut down, humanity is inevitably doomed. Given that the employees of the Foundation spent the majority of their lives working for the SCP, I think the odds of them all just giving up and moving on to other things when things go south is highly unlikely. Aside from saving humanity and fearing for the lives of their family and friends, the SCP Foundation is also their livelihood. Although the Foundation employee protocol isn't necessarily clear, it appears those who work for the Foundation are usually kept from their family. With that being said, they still know they have a family and even if they can't go home to their families, the employees would still be fearful and well aware that if specific SCPs were released, their family could be in danger. This is why I think former employees or higher ups would create their own SCP foundation of sorts. It's even possible that they tell their families what they did for work and are currently doing now that they're working for themselves technically. Unfortunately, although this is the most likely of the scenarios that would happen, it still doesn't seem like this would solve our problem. Even if past or present employees created their own SCP foundation, they wouldn't have the money or resources to run their facilities the way the original SCP foundation did. Because of this, it is possible that this group tries to contain only the most dangerous SCP or focus on stopping the SCPs they know they're capable of containing. It's quite evident one way or another, if the SCP Foundation shut down, there's no possible way all the SCPs would be contained. Depending on which SCPs are released would determine how severe a situation them shutting down really is. I think we can all agree on one thing though, if 
any SCP were to be released, it's more likely than not that there are countless casualties. The military wouldn't be able to stop one SCP, let alone thousands. Again, it does depend which ones we're talking about here, but when I say the military can't stop one SCP, I'm obviously not talking about SCP-038, which is a tree that clones anything that touches its bark. No, I'm referring more to things such as SCP-513, which upon hearing the bell ring, victims will start to see something stalking them until they're ultimately so physically and mentally exhausted, they usually just commit suicide. That SCP alone could take out an entire army, and it's a small little bell. So to wrap up, if the SCP Foundation shut down, I can't say for sure what would happen in regards to how things would play out, but what I can say is that we wouldn't know how to handle these SCPs, and it would ultimately lead to a lot of us dying. And because it seems the SCP Foundation isn't necessarily in one place, but rather have facilities all over the world, well no one would really be able to keep themselves safe. It seems the SCP Foundation is vital in regards to keeping the world from being taken over by some of the most unspeakable things. Without their selflessness, hard work, and dedication, I'm not so sure you and I would be able to enjoy this video. And and if you did enjoy this one, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Of course, I could have taken the angle that if the SCP Foundation didn't exist, a lot of people would have more time on their hands because they wouldn't be writing SCPs, and our channel would most likely focus more on extinct animals. But that's no fun. So instead, I decided to make this video revolve around hypothetical scenarios, assuming the SCP Foundation is in fact real. Hello Internet, and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel where we suspend our disbelief better than Houdini on a dining chair. Today, we're going to be covering a video that has been hotly requested in the comments section and I'm incredibly excited to have the honour of delivering such an interesting request. My name's Jack Finch and today I'll be your host as we ask what if the SCP Foundation was real. The SCP Foundation stands for either Secure, Contain, Protect or Special Containment Procedures depending on which level of SCP employee that you ask and which of them knows their mission statement from their Mount Golgotha. In essence, the SCP Foundation is a secret organisation whose sole responsibility is to contain individuals, entities, locations and objects that violate natural law and life as we know it. This responsibility is entrusted to them by multiple governments across the planet and they maintain their objective on a global scale, working within the shadows of modernity to protect humanity's sense of reality and normalcy. Let's segue though, because in real reality, the SCP Foundation is a fictional body of web-based collaborative writers who, over the course of 10 years, have established one of the largest shared fictional universes in history, which contains thousands of separate creative pieces. It's staggering how much depth this fictional world has and the SCP community and its moderators are notoriously strict with their quality control standards and anything that appears to be subpar is quickly removed. The SCP Foundation first sprouted into life on the X Forum of 4chan, an interesting backwater of the internet dedicated to all things paranormal. The first canonised post, SCP-173, was posted in 2007, and thus the crazy, creepy and oftentimes confusing fictional world was given life. So let's step into that world then and speculate the real world implications of this secret shadowy SCP Foundation. First, we have to address the possibility of a secret organisation actually existing, because as history has taught us, they definitely can and do. In 1945, the Manhattan Project was well underway, and it's estimated that no more than a few dozen people in the entire world knew the full meaning of its objective. It is believed that more than 100,000 people were employed to work on the Manhattan Project, and were warned that if anything leaked, it was punishable by a 10 year prison sentence and a $100,000 fine. You might not think it, but that's enough to make people keep their mouths shut, and their employees worked away in secrecy like moles in the dark. So the SCP Foundation, which in actual fact has quite an honourable objective, keep the world safe from paranormal entities which would otherwise make life pretty damn rotten. It wouldn't be absurd to believe that its employees understood the importance of secrecy. Imagine a grizzled old veteran, he's been on the job nearly 30 years and he's seen stuff that would make your Rice Krispies snap crackle and rot. He sat at the bar knocking back a large Lagavulin and all the locals have no idea that this guy saves them from unspeakable horrors like most people do their laundry. Yeah, at the start, fear of imprisonment and large fines would have been the SCP's way of keeping its staff shtum, but over time they'd have created quiet superheroes who just get the job 
Done. The SCP Foundation mission statement speaks of humanity's ancient battle with the paranormal. In it, it said that early humanity huddled around small fires, fearing the things that they didn't understand. Evil creatures, gods and demons, begging them to spare us. But as time went on, evil dwindled and humanity rose up, making sense of the unexplained, the absurd and the impossible. They say that while the rest of mankind dwells in the light, the SCP Foundation stands in the darkness to fight it, contain it and shield it from the eyes of the public. So imagine waking up every morning and that's your reason to get up and go to work. Yeah, no one's going to be whistleblowing at the SCP Foundation. Those guys are stone cold, unappreciated, unrelenting badasses. They're not going to be running their mouths to anyone. But let's continue the speculation and let's imagine a scenario where an SCP entity got out. Because currently in the foundation containment is an SCP that could potentially bring ruin to the whole organization. SCP-139 is a poorly preserved hominid skull that is locked deeply away in an unopenable room under constant 24-7 armed guard. Why? Well, the SCP foundation doesn't really know. They don't really even know what it is but they're absolutely terrified of it. SCP-139 has been found throughout history at the site of multiple mass slaughters. In England, roughly around the 1950s, after explorer Douglas Winthrop had found the skull on an expedition and then he slaughtered seven of his friends after succumbing to madness. Then it popped back up many years later in the Yukon in the community of Caribou Crossing where the whole town was brutally murdered and stacked in a large pile at the centre of the town's chapel. Now I don't know about you but that sounds like a Chekhov's gun that's just waiting to go off. So let's imagine then the SCP Foundation is in tatters. Hundreds of its staff have succumbed to the school's madness, slaughtering each other after a reckless employee accidentally opened the wrong door. That would attract some attention, right? Well, maybe it would be picked up by a keen-eyed journalist waiting to break the story of a lifetime. But the SCP Foundation would just sweep it under the rug. They'd mechanise their multiple contingency plans that had been meticulously mapped out in case of such a crisis. They'd seal the whole building with cement and make out that a research lab had spilled some radioactive material and people would just move on, no questions. Because it's crazy to think, but cover-ups are actually pretty simple. Area 51, Watergate, the whole of the CIA, how we've already said the Manhattan Project. It's already played out in real time throughout history. And they're just the ones that have inevitably surfaced. What else is out there lurking in a manila dossier in a long forgotten filing cabinet? So we know it's just pure nonsense, right? Or just maybe there's some version of the SCP Foundation quietly operating in the shadows as we speak, protecting us from ancient evils and paranormal anomalies. Would we even want to know? Shouldn't we just let them get on with their job? I've probably already said too much. <laughs>